people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Deadly explosions outside school in Afghanistan raise fear of more violence. India at UN Security Council expresses concern over terror acts by Islamic State. And former Maldives President Mohammad Nasheed injured in bomb blast. The air of deep uncertainty that has for so long dominated Afghanistan does not seem to disappear soon. Violence in the country has surged to new heights, while at one side, Afghan security forces are being targeted on a daily basis, young school learners too have come under the radar of terrorists. Recently, deadly explosions outside a girls' school in Kabul killed several students. Our report. Sayyid Ul Suhada school in Kabul was once a place of tentative hope. Impoverished Afghan children studied there, girls and boys who worked as carpet weavers to pay for their books. An Afghan aid group donated a library and teachers helped students paint colorful murals. But unfortunately, this place of hope recently became the site of one of the Afghanistan's worst attacks in at least a year, when a series of blasts appeared to deliberately target its female students, killed at least 60 people and injured more than 150 others. A car bomb and at least two other blasts detonated near the school gates just as the girls and young women were streaming out. The explosions targeted Afghanistan's Hazaras, who dominate the dasht e bachi neighborhood, which has been repeatedly been targeted by the armed groups in recent years. The Taliban denied any involvement, though the Afghan government blamed the insurgent group for the attack. <laughs> The foreign troop withdrawal has begun in Afghanistan with US President Joe Biden announcing that all troops will be gone by September 11. However, this announcement has led to a surge in fighting between Afghan security forces and Taliban insurgents. The leader of the Taliban, Hibatullah Akhundzada, reiterated in a message released ahead of Eid that any delay in withdrawing the troops was a violation of that deal. If America again fails to live up to its commitments, then the world must bear witness and hold America accountable for all the consequences, Akhundzada warned in the message. Such warnings clearly show that bringing peace in Afghanistan won't be easy. Just a day after school bombings, a roadside bomb blast targeted a passenger bus and killed at least 11 civilians in Shahri Safar district in Zabul province. Critics of President Biden's withdrawal decision say that Islamist militants will try to make a grab for power and civilians' fear of being once more under brutal and oppressive Taliban rule. However, Biden administration believes that Washington is committed to a responsible and sustainable end to the war in Afghanistan, while preventing the country from becoming a safe haven for terrorist groups. We call on the Taliban and Afghan leaders to engage seriously in the ongoing peace process to ensure the Afghan people enjoy a future free of terrorism and of senseless, senseless violence. Although the United States is withdrawing our troops, 
We are not disengaging from Afghanistan, and we will continue to use our diplomatic, economic, and humanitarian tool set to ensure that the gains of the past 20 years, particularly those made by women, girls, and minorities, are preserved. U.S. President Joe Biden has called the end of America's longest war an accomplishment. But the war has in no way ended and its front line yet again reached the gates of a girls' school. The U.S. and other countries withdrawing troops should understand that their responsibility to Afghan girls and women is not finished. The Taliban believes it has won and is acting accordingly. Hence, a hasty international withdrawal from Afghanistan would be unwise. With the beginning of the new year, India began a new journey at the United Nations Security Council as it became its non-permanent member for the eighth time. Ever since, New Delhi has been raising the issue of international terrorism and its sponsors at the council. Recently, India and UN Security Council expressed concern over terror acts by Islamic State and stressed that the only accountability for acts of terror and strong measures against states that support terrorism can strengthen the credibility of the global fight against the scorch. We take a look. India is not only concerned about safety and security of people living in its own territory but it always reiterates adopting and executing improved strategies to counter terrorism globally. Recently, New Delhi in UN Security Council stated that the only accountability for the acts of terror and strong measures against states that support terrorism can strengthen the credibility of the global fight against the scourge. During a briefing in connection with the crimes committed by the Islamic State, Deputy Permanent Representative Political Coordinator R. Ravindra told the Council that the Islamic State is not just another regional terrorist outfit but a global syndicate with affiliated groups across the world. The Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant has carried out inhuman atrocities against the people of Iraq. Victims of ISIL's horrific crimes also included 39 Indian nationals. ISIL has systematically committed genocide, torture, rape, slavery and kidnapping throughout the territory and it, under its control in Iraq and Syria. The Islamic State therefore cannot be seen as just another regional, out, regional terrorist outfit. It is the global syndicate with affiliated terrorist groups across the world, including in our neighborhood. A number of countries in the world are working on the development and production of weapons of mass destruction. They can kill and eliminate large numbers of people in a short time, or cause great damage to human-made and natural structures or a biosphere. There remains a grave danger that several well-established and well-funded Pakistan-backed terror organizations like Al-Qaeda, Taliban and ISIS have now gained access to these weapons and materials and methods of their formation. Expressing concern over observation that evidence collected and analyzed confirms the repeated use of chemical weapons by Islamic State against civilians. New Delhi Security Council said that India firmly condemns the use of chemical weapons anywhere, at any time, by anybody, under any circumstances. We welcome UNITAD's investigation into the development and use of chemical and biological weapons by ISIL in Iraq. We note with concern the team's observation that evidence collected and analyzed confirms the repeated use of chemical weapons by ISIL against civilians. India firmly condemns the use of chemical weapons anywhere, at any time, by anybody, under any circumstances. India has been highlighting this serious threat to international peace and security emanating from the acquisition of weapons of mass destruction by ISIL and other terrorist groups and the need for greater international cooperation to prevent it. We hope that UNITAC's investigation would also provide valuable insights in this regard, which can help the global non-proliferation efforts to address this issue, including through the 1540 Committee. For several years, India has been itself battling terrorism with great determination. Terrorism is a global phenomenon 
whose destructive potential and lethal reach is enhanced by linkages to illicit trafficking in drugs and small arms and international money laundering operations. Domestic measures alone cannot deal with terrorism as long as some countries continue to provide safe havens for terrorists. Therefore, to be effective, the fight against terrorism must be long-term sustained and global. It must tackle not just the perpetrators of the acts but also those who sponsor them. India will boost its collective effort to fight against terrorism as it will chair the Counter-Terrorism Committee in 2022 which coincides with the 75th anniversary of India's independence. Chairing this committee at this juncture will help keep the focus on the presence of terrorists and sponsors threatening the peace in the South Asian region. It has a special resonance for India, which has been in the forefront of fighting terrorism, and chairing this committee is a ringing endorsement of the country's leadership in fight against terrorism. Let's now move to Maldives, where the former Maldives President Mohamed Nasheed has been left in a critical condition, following an assassination attempt that also wounded four others, including a British national. A report. The former President of Maldives, Mohamed Nasheed, was in critical care after being severely wounded in a bomb blast outside his home. Along with Nasheed, who has now been flown out to Germany for treatment, three bodyguards and one British man were also injured. The explosion happened in capital Mali just before a nighttime curfew was due to go into effect as part of measures to contain coronavirus. Local media reports said a homemade explosive device was planted on a motorbike parked near Nasheed's car. The Maldives police say the attack was carried out by religious extremists and they have also arrested the top suspect along with two others in connection to the incident. Nasheed, the Maldives' first democratically elected president, who is now parliament speaker, has previously warned about militants infiltrating the Islamic country. India's external affairs minister S.J. Shankar also expressed concern over attack and wished Nasheed a speedy recovery, adding that he knew the former president will never be intimidated. So he's, a, he's one person who has been uh, talking openly and he has been very critical of uh, the radicalization and of the extremist group uh, on the island. Uh, which have been increasing uh, uh, in uh, time and they are causing a very major problem. Of course, uh, so far uh, it seems that uh, no group has taken any uh, responsibility for it. Two people have been arrested. But the fingers point towards the ISIS or its converted lot. Ever since the 2007 Mali Sultan Park bomb blast that injured 12 people, Maldives has been vulnerable to terrorist elements. The island nation saw many terror incidents in the first half of 2020, from a stabbing in February to a harbour fire in April. Nasheed had also previously received threats from extremist Islamist group who had called him an apostate as 53-year-old former president has been an outspoken critic of hardline Islamist. Since the late 1970s, Maldives has seen growing trends of religious intolerance. Today, the issue of radicalization and violent extremism has emerged as a potential national security threat. This threat was identified by former president Mamum Abdul Gayoom way back in the 1990s itself. And since then, some efforts have been made to tackle the issue, albeit none effectively. However, President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli has now given his commitment to find effective solutions to the problem of radicalization and violent extremism within the country. As far as terrorism or extremism is concerned, you'd be surprised that Maldives has the per capita highest number of radicalized people going into different places, whether it's in Syria or in Iraq or other wars. There are the largest number of people who have gone from here for in a small island uh, to join the ISIS. There are very good support from Salafi jihadist uh, groups, of course, to Al-Qaeda. So they have been indulging for a, quite some time now uh, into 
uh, these kind of terrorist and extremist activities, killing tourists, uh, sometimes uh, the government officials, sometimes blowing up the boats uh, belonging to the government, and there are umpteen number of groups. The thing is that Maldives also has several islands, and many of these groups operate out of those islands, and that's where they have been able to find uh, their uh, supporters, they are recruiting, they get trained in Pakistan and elsewhere. Now many of them have returned after the ISIS, have come back to, to, to Maldives. And actually it is said that the Maldives has become a good haven for these kind of terrorists. To counter terrorism, Maldives government passed two key laws in 2014. The Prevention of Money Laundering and Terrorism Financing Act and the Prevention of Terrorism Act. The letter led to the National Counter-Terrorism Center in 2016. Yet, as of December 2019, approximately 1,400 religious extremists remain active in the Maldives. A 2018 UN report found that Maldives had sent the highest per capita number of foreign terrorist fighters to Syria and Iraq in prior years, and some of these fighters are now returning to the country. Moreover, for a determined extremist group, the Maldives tourism industry is an easy target as it is possible to attack or take hostage tourists in a resort or aboard a cruise. If considerable action is not taken to address the conditions contributing to the radicalization of Maldivian citizens, there is a real potential for terrorist violence to worsen as tourists return to the island after the pandemic. While Pakistan is trying hard to revive violence in Kashmir, India is committed to fighting all their tricks to stop its western neighbor from inciting terror in the valley. The Indian security forces, despite suffering losses, managed to foil all its devious agendas. Once again, continuing with the spat of encounters that have taken place recently in the valley, Indian security forces eliminated three lashkar e taiba terrorists in Anantnag district. In an encounter between the security forces and terrorists in South Kashmir's Anantnag district, three terrorists belonging to the proscribed terror outfit lashkar e taiba were neutralized after a six-hour gun battle. As per police records, terrorists were part of the groups involved in several terror crimes, including attacks on security forces and security establishments. Arms and ammunition were recovered from the encounter site, which included one AK-47 rifle, two pistols and other incriminating material. Moreover, in a joint operation, the Territorial Army and the police also arrested a terror associate in Kupwara district. The security officials recovered 10 grenades and 182 rounds of AK-47 rifle from the accused who has been identified as Abdul Ahad Lone. There have been a series of encounters in Jammu and Kashmir in the past few weeks. Some of the salient facets regarding these I would just like to highlight. Firstly, the security forces have achieved high degree of dominance in the Kashmir Valley, whether it is North or South Kashmir. Secondly, intelligence flow is coming very smoothly. As a result, the encounters are happening right on time and the terrorists are being neutralized. Thirdly, the security forces are using a lot of patience and giving enough time for the terrorists to surrender. This is particularly important because a number of these are very young youth who have been indoctrinated and weaned away by propaganda. Frustrated with ongoing development and peace in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan is using all the tricks in its book to incite terrorism in the region, although most of its moves have either failed or backfired. To maintain peace and development, the government of India has given a free hand to its security forces to eliminate terrorists operating in the Union territory. Moreover, people in Kashmir Valley are also helping the Indian security forces to crack down on terror hideouts and this has helped in executing a large number of counter-terrorism operations carried out by the Indian security forces in the recent past. 
Frustrated by repeated failure in carrying out large-scale terror attacks, Pakistan-backed terror groups are now adopting new tactics to unleash chaos and violence in the region. In recent months, Indian security forces have seized dozens of lethal sticky bombs dropped by drones and tunnels along the international border in Jammu and Kashmir. The arrival of the sticky bombs in Kashmir raises concern that an unnerving tactic attributed to the Islamabad-backed Taliban insurgents in nearby Afghanistan could be spreading to the Indian territory. Afghanistan in recent months has seen a series of sticky bomb attacks targeting security forces, judges, civil society activists and journalists. Pakistan has realized that since 1990, the traditional way of militancy that was pushing in trained militants from its soil into India and Kashmir Valley is not working and now the, it is on the dying stage because of the actions of the Indian security forces, the Kashmiri people rising up against all these militants and also to ensure and the uh, bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir state into two union territories and abrogation of Article 370-35A. Therefore, now it has started using these uh, methods of the sticky bombs and others being dropped by drones across the border. Thousands of Kashmir have died in a proxy war orchestrated by Pakistan and they continue to suffer due to terrorist groups patronized by Pakistan military establishment. Kashmiri voices across the globe have urged the international community to take a serious note on Pakistan atrocities on Kashmiris and have highlighted the use of terrorism by Islamabad as a foreign policy tool against them. Despite all the embarrassment and name-calling at various global forums, Pakistan continues to use terrorism as an instrument of its state policy. Pakistan deep state that is the army has been indulging in malicious activities like infiltration and espionage to unleash mayhem in India. In a sophisticated world where other countries are looking forward to establishing peace, harmoning and developing new technologies for the advancement of the world settlement, Pakistan's state policy of terrorism is causing violence and is creating an environment of distrust in the world. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Yeshi signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of News. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.